Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I am and we all are so pleased that you have chosen and joined with us and joined the worship together and praising God together. I want to say something before we start worship today. Our friend Jomi and Burmese nation, the Myanmar, has a coup last week. And tomorrow, because I'm recording this message on Thursday, tomorrow, Friday of this week, Tulsa also joined the protest for justice for the, our friend's country, Myanmar. I want you to join with us and pray for their family, their country, and justice to our world and our nation too. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, especially the nation of Myanmar and the family and friends there. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Almighty God as we receive this morning's prayer. Please join with me, call to worship this morning. Lift up your eyes to the witness of the words. God's presence is here in the plants and the trees. Lift up your eyes to the love of God. God's grace abounds. 
Lift up your voices to join in the song. It is good to sing praise to our Creator God. Please join with me, call to confession and silent prayers. Let us come before the Lord in spirit and in truth. Gracious God, we know we have sinned and missed your purpose for our lives. Some of our sin is known to us, the thoughts and words and deeds for which we are sorry. Some of our sin is known only to you. We ask for deliverance, forgiveness, and restoration in Jesus' name. Assurance of God's pardon this week. God is faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Reading from New Testament is 1st Corinthians chapter 9 verse 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and owe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Scripture reading today from the Gospel according to Mark is still in chapter 1, beginning to read with verse 29. As soon as they the Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue. They entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. Now that evening at sundown, 
They brought to him all who were sick or possessed of demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Now in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Simon and his companions hunted for him, and when they found him, they said to him, Everyone, everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. So Jesus went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the early church developed, Christians began to think about what, what they believed about Jesus. And there came to be uh, statements of faith uh, we find some of them in the New Testament itself. Uh, for example, uh, Philippians chapter 2. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Or, or for example, in 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul says that he passed on what he received, that Jesus died for our sins according to Scripture and was buried, that he was raised from the dead according to Scripture and appeared to Cephas and, and all the others. So you have a sense of a formula, died, buried, raised, appeared. And, and over the years and over the centuries as the church grew, there came to be more uh, full expressions of faith. Uh, the most familiar ones are the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. Both of those are official creeds of the Presbyterian Church USA. And, and even those churches that do not adopt uh, official creeds from the church uh, in the early days uh, still look to the Apostles' Creed for foundation beliefs, foundation faith. Uh, for example, Albert Moeller, who is president of Southern Baptist Seminary in Louisville, has written a book on the Apostles' Creed. Baptists don't officially believe in uh, the creeds such as the Apostles and Nicene, but, but they are accepted as foundation faith. But you know, when you read those, you discover something that, that seems odd. For example, in the Apostles' Creed, we believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and set it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Did you notice that, that movement? It's very similar to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. But, but look, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. We have the virgin birth, we have the crucifixion, we have the resurrection, but notice there's this great big gap. 
in the creed. Nothing about the life and teaching and, and healing and, and preaching of Jesus. Isn't that odd? When we have four gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, at great length talk about Jesus and, and his teaching and his preaching and his healing and casting out demons and, and eating with sinners and, and, and reaching out to people, that the creeds ignore that entirely. I think it's important for our faith to not simply affirm the creeds, but to also listen to the gospel accounts. We, we have been listening to this first chapter in the gospel according to Mark. It says that after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God, saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus came preaching. And then we noticed uh, that, that he called disciples. So Jesus' ministry was not a solitary ministry, not an isolated ministry. He gathered a group of people around him that became his disciples, his followers. And then the story moves on rather quickly. They gathered together on the Sabbath day in the synagogue, and Jesus taught there. Now, apparently, from what we can know, any adult male could uh, read Scripture. There's other stories of Jesus reading Scripture in the synagogues, and any adult could teach in the synagogues. I know many years ago when I was a fairly young minister and I would visit in other churches, I learned very quickly that if I visited in a black church, the tradition there was that uh, you would honor a visiting preacher by asking him to preach. Now, the pastor of the church might preach and maybe the associate pastor might preach, and then you might be the third preacher or the fourth preacher. The services would go on for hours. And I learned that I should be prepared to preach when I visited one of those services. So uh, Jesus was apparently <coughs> prepared to speak and preach in the synagogue. And he was interrupted by a demon who was possessing someone who was making a lot of trouble. And, and Jesus cured, healed that man by casting out his demon. And, and then as we pick up the story in today's scripture reading, it said as they, Jesus and the disciples, left the synagogue, they went to the house of Simon and Andrew. And there they discovered that Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed. She had a fever. Jesus went to her and reached out and took her hands and, and lifted her up out of the bed, and her fever was gone. It's a sign of, of Jesus' healing power of his presence with people. Now, I've got to say, a lot of women today don't like this passage because as she was healed of her fever, the scripture says that she served them. And there are a lot of women today that don't like the notion that women's place is in the home and to serve their man, serve men. That's the only reason women are here on earth, right? To, to serve the men. And, and you can hear the teeth grinding when, when you read that passage. I, I don't take it that way. I believe that any one of us that comes to know the saving, healing power of Jesus would want to respond, as did Simon's mother-in-law, by, by serving. 
It's not simply that a woman served the men, it's that a person that came to know God's grace wanted to serve and, and, and follow Jesus. The word is the same as uh, being a minister or a deacon. It is to serve. And, and isn't that what we do as Christians? We come to know Jesus, his love, his power for us, and, and we want to serve. We want to serve Jesus, and we want to serve one another in, in the body of Christ because we have been served by Jesus. It said after that, he healed at sundown, which means if you remember, this is the Sabbath. So the Sabbath ended at sundown started at sundown Friday and went to sundown Saturday. And the Sabbath is over and people brought Jesus, those people who, who were sick, who needed healing, who were considered demon-possessed. We might say they had mental illnesses nowadays. And, and I think Mark is very honest about this because he says that Jesus healed many Jesus healed many who were sick. He cast out many demons. Did you catch that? Many, not all, not every single one, but, but many. There were probably people that were not healed, that probably went away unhappy because they weren't healed. Mark is honest about Jesus healing. It is not that he was able to reach everyone, but he reached out in the love of God to heal. And then the next day, the next day it says, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed. Jesus went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. You know, in the very difficult times in which we live, we too need to find this balance, the balance of, of being around people as Jesus called people around him, and, and then going out to a desert place, a, a, a quiet place, a place of solitude. Now, it doesn't have to be away from home, but it needs to be separate from all of those forces that are impinging on us and, and, and causing us to be anxious and worried about uh, our very lives. Years and years ago, during the Vietnam War, we had a dear member of a church that had a, an emotional breakdown. And in many ways, it was attributed to her watching the news of the war in Vietnam and the opposition to the war in this country. And, and she just could not stand up to the stress. I tell people sometimes today, quit watching. Quit looking at everything. If, if you are getting so anxious about everything going on in our world, just take a break. Jesus, Jesus went off early in the morning to a deserted place where he could pray. You know, I tell people I'm not much of a prayer, but I find because of the circumstances of our lives these days that I'm praying more often and more fervently because there's so many concerns that we all share today. We need to find that quiet place and we need to find that place of prayer. It's not easy for many of us. I'll never forget 
many, many years ago, perhaps 40 or more years ago, when I was serving a church in South Louisiana, our presbytery uh, had a pastor's retreat every year, and we decided one year we would go to the Jesuit retreat house at Grand Coteau, the Sacred Heart Retreat House uh, in Grand Coteau, Louisiana. And we thought, okay, since this is Jesuits and, and they are used to doing silent retreats, we would spend our three-day retreat in silence as well. It drove me up the wall. I mean, the worst of it was sitting at a table and not being able to talk to people. It, it got so bad, and I never know if this was emotional or physical, but I just had the most awful upset stomach. I mean, it, it was bad. Was I somehow emptying myself because mentally I was not able to empty myself? I, I don't know, but I can tell you that I often tell people, do what I say, not what I do, because I have difficulty with silence and solitude. But we all need to get away. We all need to find the way to recharge our spiritual batteries. Jesus needed to get away as well. You know, the, the uh, Korean Christian, Christians have, have a, a very long tradition of, of fervent prayer, of pre-dawn praying, of, of getting up in the middle of the night and praying for hours and hours. And uh, Eugene Cho, tells the story on himself. Uh, Eugene Cho is now the executive of Bread for the World, but he was the founding pastor of the Quest Church in uh, Seattle, a church of multicultural, multiracial, multi multi-ethnic, uh, a very unique church and uh, a very successful church. But before that, he had begun a new church, and, and it was struggling. No, that's not right. It was not struggling. It was failing. It was failing to such an extent that they could not pay his salary. And so he had taken a job as a janitor in a store. Uh, he would get up about 3 in the morning and, and uh, go clean up the store and before it opened for business. And um, he tells the story of his mother visiting from Korea. And uh, he was embarrassed that he was a failure as a pastor. So he, he, uh, he didn't tell his mother. Uh, and, and so he got up about three in the morning and got dressed and was going to sneak out the door. And he was just about to open the door when he looked up. And there was his mother. She had gotten up to pray. And of course, she's asking him, what, what are you doing up? You're not going outside to pray. And, you know, you don't lie to your mother. So he had to tell her that he was a failure. Uh, he, he had thought God wanted him to start this church, but it, it, it just was not working. He was a failure, and he was, he was going to have to work uh, to, to support his family. His mother said, uh, wait, I'll go with you. And he said, what do you mean you'll go? I'll, I'll help you clean. Now, I think if I remember when I heard this story from Cho, he was, he was talking about the sense of failure and that God working with you nevertheless. But you know what struck me about that story? His mother went with him. His mother was willing to give up her prayer time in order to support and encourage her son, the mother 
went with him. And, and you know, that, that reminds me of Jesus here because when, when people couldn't find Jesus, they went and looked for him and, and complained. Well, everybody's looking for you, Jesus. What, what are you doing out here by yourself? And Jesus didn't say, go away. Jesus didn't say, I'm praying, leave me alone. Jesus said, okay. Let's, let's get back on the road. I have a lot more preaching to do. He went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The good news that, that kind of gets left out between the virgin birth and the crucifixion is that Jesus here on earth preached, taught, healed, and reached out to people in love and in grace and, and in caring for us. And just as the disciples left the boats to follow him, just as Simon's mother-in-law served them, just as you and I are called to follow him, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know the good news that God is with us and calls us to service in his name. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, there are times when we need companionship and need to be together. There are times when we need solitude, when we need to be able to, to shut out all of the sounds and distractions that would turn us away from you and turn us away from serving you and one another. Lord God, we pray for your spirit to help us distinguish the times, the times we need to gather and the times that we need to scatter, the times that we need to be your people. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.
This is the joyful feast of the people of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples in Emmaus, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized the Lord. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. Our book of order says that the opportunity to eat and drink with Christ is not a right bestowed upon the worthy, but a privilege given to the undeserving who come in faith, repentance, and love. Come, come to the Lord's table today. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator of the universe. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey you, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. Then, in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the faithful of every time and place, who say to the glory of your name, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, 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 power and might. Heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Thank you for Jesus, for his teaching and healing, for his challenging and feeding, for his living and dying and rising that we might be raised with him and all the world made new. We thank you that on the night before he died, he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and shared it with his friends. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and wine, gifts of the good earth, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice dedicated to your service, for great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has now. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your gathered people and on these gifts, bread and wine of earth, to body and blood of heaven, our frail flesh and blood to your holy people, that we might be Christ's body to your world. For this world we now pray. Help us deal with the global pandemic social isolation and disputes. Guide us in responding to natural and man-made disasters and disruptions. End all war. Mend your wounded earth. Heal those who suffer. Comfort those who mourn. And infuse us with your peace that is rooted in what is just. Through the power of your spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another as we work and wait in hope, confident in that day when Christ will come to make all things well and we will feast together at his heavenly table. All glory and honor are yours, holy God, through Christ and in the unity of the Spirit, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. 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 As our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Listen now to the words of institution of the Lord's Supper. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Paul says, For every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's saving death until he comes again. Ministering on behalf of our Lord, we take this bread, which has been blessed and broken, and say to you, take and eat. This is for you. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the remission of sin. All of you drink of it. As often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's saving death until he comes. same way after supper he took the cup and said all of you drink of it. Take and drink. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we wait for the fulfillment of your desires for your whole creation, even now, at this table, in this meal, you have met us in Christ. We thank you, Lord, for feeding us with the bread of life, for quenching our thirst with the cup of salvation. As we have been nourished and strengthened here, send us out into the world by the power of your Holy Spirit to share your life and salvation with all whom we meet. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.
We are so glad that you have joined with us under the word of the Lord and at the Lord's table. We pray that you have been encouraged and strengthened for living each day in the coming weeks. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion, fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each one of you this day and every day. Amen.